At this point on my road trip, noble ideals about mateship seem rather hollow. This country is bewildering, honestly. I don't know how to bridge these gaps that there are. You know, they talk about mateship and everybody's very cosy-wosy in their own little world. But there are two worlds and they're not connecting. So how do we start building the connections we need? I've always believed this is where storytellers and artists have a part to play. So I'm excited to be meeting a group of elders who started something they call Children's Ground as a way of passing on their stories and culture to a new generation. I'm just wondering why they've chosen such a remote place. Hello. Uh, thank you. Hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome to Tukara. Thank you very yeah. much. My name is Margaret, they call me MK, and that's Leonie. Hello. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the country, nice welcome to, to Itagara. Oh, nice to welcome. meet you. Yeah. We were here today talking to the land and telling that you are coming. Was the land okay yeah. about that? Yeah. <laughs> this is First Nation Kindergarten. Hi, kids. Wada, wada, wada. Wada. They said hello <laughs> what, in what language. Wada. Wada. They still talk their own language. And they just go anywhere. They just walk, climb, run around. We're free. Yeah. This Where is, the way we is there a river near here? This is the river. This is oh. the river bed. <laughs> this is the river. That but is where's the, the water? We've got to get water. We've got to get water to come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is the river called? Does it have a Itagara. name? Itagara. Itagara. Real name is El Catalatum. El Catalatum. Yeah. So tell me what happens here. We bring the children out here. We let them play. We teach them songs and <coughs> we read them some stories. And when we bring them out here, they'll love it. Yeah. And the family loves it. The mothers loves it. And how often does it happen here? We come here every Tuesday. Wow. I love your movie. Oh, they were real happy Mary to Potter's see it. The famous hey, we're going to see this lady from Harry Potter's. All the kids nearly eye popped out. And they thought Harry Potter nice. was one of these guys here. Put him come right here, come talk to me. Don't get shy. Bring him up. Bring him up. Where's Harry, Harry Potter? Where's Harry Potter? Where is he now? Where is he? Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. He's... <laughs> well, he's in your head. He's in your head. Because he's... <laughs> yeah, he's a special... He's a special... He's a special... He's a special... MK is teaching these kids the Aranda language. It's one of 13 Aboriginal languages still passed on to children today. From the more than 250 that were spoken before white settlement. These are the books that are just made up by the women here. This story is about Ilindja. Ilindja is the galah oh, that sits on the tree They're here. the parrots? Yeah. What's the word for a kangaroo? Agara. Agara. Hey, good on yeah. you. Hey! What a world you live in here. Oh, lovely world. We enjoy ourselves. So you're language. happy when you come here, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah we're real language. happy. We really love it. And MK's also teaching the kids the songs and dances she's learnt. I can see now why MK chose to bring these kids all this way to this wonderful creek bed. A timeless place where they can connect to Aranda traditions, culture, and most importantly, the land. Adorable, adorable. Although MK and I have led completely different lives, we do have much in common. 
We're close in age, a bit arthritic, and we both believe in the power of the stories we love to connect all kinds of mobs. When the people used to live, I used to tell stories about putting a windbreak and we made fire burning. And, and in the night, we'll tell the story about the Milky Way and about the stars. We, we used to tell them about, you see those stars up there? That star somebody tells you when the cold winter is there. That's the seven sisters. When they go down, that means the winter's coming close. And that's how the children got to know when it's winter and when it's summer. Thank you. Yeah. It's my turn to share a favourite story from my childhood. Come on, come on. Well, there was an English writer whom I like very much. His name is Charles Dickens. See, that's Mrs. Gamp. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, good on you. Thank you. That Thank lovely. you. Lots of love. You're Till the next love. time. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. With MK, I just felt there was a river flowing. Bye, Miriam. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. She let me play in her river, and she was able to play in mine. So we splashed about together. <laughs> Stories are, and always have been, a way of explaining life to people, and particularly to children. I think that telling stories and listening to stories is a human need. First Nation people have been telling stories for thousands of years, and their stories explain the world, generation upon generation. Unbelievable that you can have the same landscape for hundreds of miles. Back on the highway to Darwin, I must say I'd be extremely grateful for a CWA cup of tea and a chat, because I'm beginning to understand what isolation truly means. It's quite rough being out of touch with my partner, Heather. I've tried to phone every day while I've been here, but when you get to certain bits of the bush, you're completely out of any sort of communication. A lot of my life has been through conversation, and if I can't talk to the person I love, then I feel a bit miffed. <laughs> There's a very wise saying, a fresh face makes you forget your own. So after nearly two days of driving, I'm very pleased to be pulling into the tiny township of Daly Waters, 900 kilometers north of Alice. Blimey, this is a bit of a one-horse place. <laughs> the pub here is owned and run by Tim Carter. Are you Tim? I am Tim. Nice Welcome to meet you. To Daily Waters. Where's the loo? Where's the loo? Straight through that door over okay. here. Okay. I better go to the loo and then I'll come and talk to okay. you. Okay. Perhaps it's the tip top facilities that draw people here, or just the need for some company. How are you getting on? It's a big country. It is. Yeah. Why are you so big? That's good Australian barbecues. Oh. Mm. And so did you buy this business? Yes, yeah, bought the pub. And who's decorated it all like this? Well, everyone seems to leave a little bit of um, their own. And you get a lot of people that leave their ashes. There's a guy, mm. yeah, there's, mm. yeah. There's a lot out in the garden. 
when someone dies, I want to leave it at Daly Waters because they've had a really good booze up in their time. That's very charming, mm. actually. Yeah. Mateship and a good time seem to go hand in hand with what Tim calls the larrikin spirit. What is a larrikin? A larrikin is someone that's a bit cheeky, who enjoys a good joke, a laugh, and likes a bit of a stir. I mm. think that makes me a larrikin, actually. I think you would be, yeah. <laughs> It, can a woman be a larrikin? Yeah, you've just... as long as they don't go too far. So who decides what's too far? The public. And that's you in this game. <laughs> You're the ref. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, now look, I'm right. hungry. Yeah, it You're, is you're supposed to be a, a mine host. A... Well, would you like some barramundi? Bloody right. And salad. Yeah. Barramundi. Please. Oh, please. Um, Grilled, Grilled, darling, first, yeah. please. Because I don't want to get like him. <laughs> you bloody cheeky. What? I think it's the distances out here that make people so open to each other. Where strangers can become instant mates, not knowing if fate will ever bring them together again. I'm going to take my hat off and kiss you. All right, very Thank good. You. Thank you. You are a larrikin, it's true. Aye, and you're a good person. <laughs> Thanks a lot. See you, Miriam. See ya. And now on to Darwin. And heaven knows what that's going to bring. I have a confession to make. A few years ago, I wanted to bring my show about Charles Dickens to Darwin but I was told there was no audience for it. So, for purely selfish reasons, I'm not sure if Darwin will be my sort of town. But after a 1,500-kilometre trip from the Alice, I'm very glad to be near the sea.